Hey learners, welcome back to my channel. I am Vipul Gupta. In my previous video, we have discussed how we can write a basic select statement. We learned how we can filter the records from a particular table. In addition to that, I have shared a practice problem for you guys. In this video, I will be discussing the solution of the problem first. With that, we will be learning some new concepts. After that, I will be discussing about sorting, limiting the records from a particular table and how we can check for the missing values from a particular record. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any update from my channel. So guys, let's understand this practice problem first. We need to write an SQL query to find out the prices of soap, marker and bottle. Let's have a look at the input table and the desired output. On the left side, I have the input table and on the right side, I have the output table. Here we have two things that we need to note. The first one is the difference in the name of the columns. In the input table, the items are shown as item underscore name. Whereas in the output table, it is shown as product. Similarly, for prices of the item, we have item underscore price as the column name in the input table. Whereas product underscore price in the output table. The second thing is number of rows. In the input table, the number of rows is 11, whereas in the output table, we just have 3 rows. So let's go to MySQL workbench for the solution. So guys, now we are at the MySQL workbench. Before writing the solution for this SQL query, we need to understand a concept that is aliasing. So whenever you want to rename the name of the columns in the output table, we use aliasing. Let's see how it works. So I am writing a query. We need to print two columns that is item underscore name and item underscore price from items table right now i want to rename this item underscore name as products and item underscore price as product prices so let's see how it works so in order to do that we need to use as and after as we need to mention the name that we want to print so for the item underscore name, we want to print products and for item underscore price, we want to print product prices. Let me execute it. Before executing it, I need to mention the database that I am going to use. That is, okay, now let's execute this. Let me expand it. Okay. So here you can see in the output section, the item underscore name has been renamed as products and item underscore price has been renamed as product prices. Now moving ahead to the second part, that is we want the item prices just for soap, marker and bottle. So here we need to use where in order to filter the fine, uh, input table. So for this, let me write where item underscore name equals to the first item is soap or item underscore name equals to the second item is marker or item underscore name equals to bottle so let's execute this see so this is the desired output we are getting products and product prices as the column names and we are getting the details just for three products soap, bottle and marker. Now this is one way of doing it. Suppose some someone asked me that he want the item details for 500 items out of 5000 items. So writing this item name equals to soap, item name equals to marker, item name equals to bottle, it will be a tedious task. So we have an alternate to do this. I will be writing a query to show it in a better manner. Product prices from stable where now we have a list. We have soap, marker and bottle. So instead of writing or or again and again, we can use item underscore name in. So this is the new keyword that we are going to learn here. So under this in, we can provide a list, list of all the items against which we want to see the details. So in our case, it's so 
marker and bottle so this query will provide the same result that we are getting in the above case see so we are getting products product prices and we are getting three items that is soap marker and bottle now suppose we have a list of 5000 items and we want to exclude some of the items let's say uh, I, I do not want to include soap marker and bottle in our case so instead of writing in we can use not so basically what it will do it will go to this input table it will see all the records where item name is not equal to soap marker and bottle so let's execute it see so in the output section we are not getting any record corresponding to soap marker and bottle so guys now let's move ahead to a new concept that is sorting what is sorting so whenever you want to organize your data in a particular manner it is called as sorting for example in the output set shown over the screen we have data for two columns products and product prices now i want to modify this output in such a manner that the product with the smallest product price will be coming in the first row followed by the product with the second smallest price this way the last row will be displaying the product with the highest product price so now how can we do this in sql so in order to do this in sql we need to use a keyword that is order by we need to mention the order by keyword which will be followed by the name of the column against which you want to sort your data and then we need to mention the order in which we want to sort it whether it's ascending order or descending order so let me write an example to explain this in a better manner so we have this query in which we are writing that we need to extract the data from item name column and we want to alias it as products similarly for the item underscore price we want to alias it as product prices from items table where item name not in soap marker and bottle now i in order to order this i will be writing a keyword order by now i want to sort my data against product prices so i want to mention the name of the column so the actual name of this column is item underscore price so i will be mentioning this then i want to provide a order that is i want to organize it in the ascending order or descending order let's say i want to organize it in the ascending order so i will be writing asc uh, we need to remove this semicolon from here first yeah so let's execute this query see now the data is sorted with respect to the product prices in the ascending order similarly if you want to organize or sort this data in the descending order we can use desc so instead of asc we need to mention desc so let's execute this to see the output see now the data is sorted in the descending order now please make a note that if you do not mention any sorting order then it will automatically consider it that you want to sort your data in the ascending order let me show it to you so let me remove this desc from here and let's execute this query once again to see the output so here in the query you can see i have not mentioned any specific order so you can see in the output that the data is sorted in the ascending order so now let's take a step ahead and note that in the product price column of the output set the value is coming as 50 for the first three rows that is there is a tie in the product price value now i want to modify this table in such a manner that in case of any tie in the product price value i want to sort my data in the alphabetical order in which the item name is coming right so how can we do that in sql so in order to do that we'll be continuing with this query that is written on the screen but after this product price i'll be giving a command that first of all the data will be sorted with respect to the item price but in case of any tie it will check the other column now we have to mention the name of the second column that it will check for the sorting so here i want to sort my data with respect to the item price first and then with respect to the name of the item so i will be mentioning the name of the column after that you can mention the order in which you want to sort your data now since i want to sort my data in the ascending order so i will be skipping 
writing ascending or descending here. So let's execute this query and see the output. See, now in the output you can see that for the products column, the chips packet is coming before pen since C comes before in the alphabetical order, right? Similarly, suppose I want to modify this output in such a manner that for for the call or for the rows or records where the product price there is a tie in the product prices, then it will check the item name and sort them in the descending manner. In that case, after this column name, I want to mention that I want to sort my data in the descending order. That is, I want to see this pen before the chips packet. So for that, I'll be mentioning DESC. So DESC stands for descending as we discussed earlier. So let me execute this. See, so now this pen is coming earlier than chips packet, right? And suppose I want to modify this query in such a manner that the item price is also sorted in descending order and item name is also sorted in the descending order. So for that, after every column, you, you need to mention the sorting order in this way. So let's execute this. See. The product prices is sorted in the descending order and for the product products where the product price is uh, there is a tie in the product prices so it will check for the product name and it will sort them in the descending order that is why pen is coming before chips packet. So this way you can sort your data with respect to the n number of columns that are available in the table in the desired sorting order. Now let's move to our next concept. Suppose you are in a situation when you are dealing with a big table, the table has more than 1 million of rows and you just want to understand like what kind of data is flowing into that particular table. So for that you can write a basic select statement but writing a simple select statement doesn't make any sense here because you are unnecessarily wasting the database resources, right? So if you just want to get an idea like what kind of data is flowing in that particular table, it can be done by a limited number of rows as well. So in SQL, we can do this by limiting the number of rows. For that, we need to use a limit clause. Let me show you how it works. For example, in the output table, we are, we are getting 8 rows. Now suppose I want to limit the number of rows to 5. So we can do that using a limit clause. Let me show you how it works. So I will be writing in continuous with this, uh, in continuous with this query. So I will be mentioning limit 5. So before that we are getting 8 rows but after mentioning limit equals to 5 it will be showing only 5 rows. See in this case we are just getting 5 rows. So this way you can limit your data with respect to the uh, desired number of rows that you want. So guys this limit clause is very 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 useful as if you are working as a data analyst then there are high chances that you will be encountering situations where you have to use limit clause. For example, you are working for a car making company and uh, the hire manager wants to see like what uh, what are the top three cars in terms of sale. In that case, you have to use limit clause. Similarly, they want to see uh, the top five cars with respect to the price. Then you have to use limit. Also, if you are appearing for any interview, so there are high chances that you will be asked a question where you have to use limit clause, right? So with this, guys, let's move to our next concept. So now instead of using this items underscore table, we'll be using a new table. So let me open a new uh, editor and see what's inside that table. So I'll be using orders table. So as I mentioned, first of all, we need to mention the name of the database and let me execute this. Yes. So now I want to see what, what data is inside this orders table. So select star from orders. Let's execute this. See. So now in the output table, please note that there are some of the records for which we are getting nulls. Null is equal to blank values, right? Now I want to filter out these null values in the output set, right? So now suppose from this table, orders table, I want to see all the records where the order date is missing. So how can we do that in SQL? So since we want to filter the data, so obviously we'll be using where clause. Now let's see how it works. So in order to get the missing values, I will be writing select star from orders where order date is null. Right. So let's execute this and see the output. See, we are getting only two records because for these two records, the order date is coming as null. Similarly, suppose I want to see all the orders against which 
amount column is present right so for that i will be modifying this query will be writing where amount is not null so let's execute this see so we are just getting six rows out of seven rows because the amount column was missing in one of the of one of the rows so thank you for watching this video i hope you like it don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel for more videos and interview tips don't go anywhere as i have a practice problem for you guys at the end of this video so guys this is the practice problem that you have to attempt basically you need to write an sql query to print the list of the name of the employees from the table employees for whom the salary is greater than $2000 per month and who have been part of this company for less than 10 months that is the tenure should be less than 10 months further once you fetch all the output records then you have to sort your data with respect to the employee id in the ascending order please refer this table for you, for writing your query and i want the output in this particular format please do let me know the solution in the comment section and i'll be discussing the solution in the next video thank you for watching